Peace be with you and welcome to this novena in preparation for Christmas. This is our eighth novena for those making the nine devotions. As we come to the end of the year, we realize that it has been rather a gloomy and dark year for many people. And as we light the last candle in Advent, we call this light the Angel's Light. The angels of light are the messengers and helpers of God's work. May the angels of light help bring us to our guardian angel, lead us always away from darkness and danger for the coming year. And praying with us in our devotion today is the new transitional deacon to the priesthood from the Penang Diocese. Deacon Raymond Raj. He reminds us that in this Advent season we cannot do without the help of Mary, for she herself prepared for the coming of the Messiah at Christmas. One of the obstacles that hinders us from quiet, prayerful moments is being too busy from what is really important. Sometimes it's work. And sometimes it's the hustle and bustle of everyday life. In Psalm 46, God reminds us to be still and know that I am God. Let us surrender our minds and tame our hearts and be still and enter into this opening hymn with... Thank you. 
Thank you all for your well wishes. I had a wonderful celebration for my 37th anniversary. Some of you made me much older, but thank you for your prayers and your support. It's a beautiful day because Mary is with us. And so with joy, let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. My dear wonderful friends in Christ, we are truly grateful to God for the many blessings we have received from Him, to the prayers of our Mother of Perpetual Health. Let us once more ask her to pray with us and for us. As we come to the close of Advent, before we celebrate our Christmas Novena, we have arranged and picked beautiful themes that will be part of our prayers this week of Advent. Here they are. Pray with us. Every year on the 10th of December, the world celebrates Human Rights Day. The very day when, in 1948, the United Nations General Assembly adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. This year, the theme of Human Rights Day is Dignity, Freedom and Justice for All. Both the Declaration and the World Health Organization's Constitution asserts that health is a fundamental human right for all people. There can be no dignity, freedom and justice without health for all. Our basic human rights must include the right to life and liberty, freedom from slavery and torture, freedom of opinion and expression, the right to work and education, and many more. Despite the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, racism, misogyny, inequality and hatred continue to threaten our world. We pray for the voiceless, the underprivileged, and those who feel ostracized and persecuted because of their status, religion, and color. May God grant them peace, healing, and perseverance so that they never give up fighting for their rights. For them we pray. Be with us, O loving Mother. International Mountain Day is celebrated annually on the 11th of December to create awareness about the importance of mountains to life. To highlight the opportunities and constraints of mountain development and to build alliances that will bring positive change to mountain peoples and environments around the world. Mountains are the world's water towers, providing 60 to 80 percent of all fresh water resources for our planet for both human, plant, and animal life. At least half of the world's population depends on mountain ecosystem services to survive. Not only water, but also food and clean energy. Humans have exploited the timber, mining and pasture-rich resources of mountain environments for hundreds of years. Let us pray for our forests and an end to deforestation landslides, land degradation, desertification, and greater awareness and appreciation of mountains and rainforests, as they are vital ecosystems for our survival. For this we pray. Be with us, O loving Mother. Our Lady of Guadalupe, also known as the Virgin of Guadalupe, is a Catholic title of Mary. Mother of Jesus, associated with a series of five Marian apparitions, which are believed to have occurred in December 1531 to Juan Diego. A venerated image on a cloak is enshrined within the Basilica of Our Lady of Guadalupe in Mexico City. The Basilica is one of the most visited Catholic shrines in the world and the world's third most visited sacred site. The Virgin who appeared at Tepeyac was associated with motherhood, with birth and with new life. 
the old ways of life of the people, the old civilization had ended, with their temples and their previous way of life destroyed. Our Lady of Guadalupe was bringing forth new life, a new people, and a new way of living. She gave Juan Diego a message for the local bishop to build a temple on the hillside where she appeared, so she would have a place to hear petitions and prayers and provide miracles. We continue to ask her to hear our petitions and prayers, especially for the poor and the needy this Christmas. Be with us, O loving Mother. In many countries, Christmas has become a cultural event associated with the giving of gifts and lavish meals with friends and family. But the traditional understanding of Christmas is that it is a Christian celebration of the birth of Emmanuel, God with us. We all like to give gifts to our families and friends for Christmas. I'm not advocating that everyone completely gives up gift giving. But maybe we can buy a few of our gifts from companies that give back. Think about what you want to support. Do you want to support families and third world countries by donating maybe a sheep or a flock of ducks or even a hive of bees? There are many ways to do that. Just do a Google search. Maybe it's time to buy gifts made by people in desperate need of jobs in developing countries. Do you want to buy a sustainable product from a developing country and to find a company that also builds up the communities surrounding their facilities or farms? Find a way to put Christ back into Christmas by bringing hope, love, forgiveness and peace where it is needed the most. For this we pray. Be with us, O loving Mother. Let us sum up all our intentions and pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Welcome back. And now I present to you your letters of petitions and thanksgiving that have come into our website. Thank you for writing in. Dearest Mother, there is definitely a long-awaited letter of thanksgiving. I thank you with all my being, for you were there in my teens as an adult when I had to make tough decisions. As a mother myself, you journeyed with me through my motherhood and you still do so whenever I call upon you, especially during my darkest moments. You didn't leave me alone, but led me to your son. Thank you, Mother, during the pandemic. We, the devotees, were blessed with online novenas by Father Patrick Masang. He and his crew did dynamic job every week that no one could ever dream of. Father helped us to pray for many petitions and intentions around the globe, together with many preachers who gave us their best. The sharings helped me look even deeper into my faith journey. Nevertheless, for leading us all prayerfully during this Advent season, I pray that God will continue to bless and inspire Father Patrick Masang, who has given us so much in art, music and prayer. Thank you, Mother, for praying for us as Father Patrick Masang for this unique novena from your devoted daughter. 
dearest mother of perpetual help, thank you for your powerful intercession to our Lord Jesus Christ for a benign result of the brain scan of my wife, a big relief for our family and friends from your grateful Catholic son. Dear Mother Mary, please intercede to our Lord Jesus Christ for my wife's atrial fibrillation problem with irregular heartbeat from your anxious Catholic son. Dearest Mother Mary, we just found out that our son is unemployed and is undergoing depression to the point that he is not able to communicate with us. Mother, we are so worried about him. While he has texted us that a friend is taking care of him, we are concerned that without a regular income, how long will that last? Mother, please intercede, comfort and console him and help him in his hour of need so that he can rise up to this challenge with God's blessings and mercy from your concerned son. Dear Mother Mary, my grandfather passed away recently. I miss his jokes and his wise words and wisdom. Above all, he adored you the most in his life. Forgive all his sins and may he rest in peace. I also pray for a miracle to conceive. It has been two years. Remove all my fibroids and cyst. I place all my trust in you and your son. Thank you from your loving daughter. Dear Lord Jesus and Mother of Perpetual Help, I come to you and seek help for two of my classmates who have been hospitalized for treatment. Bless them with good outcome and speedy recovery. Thank you, Lord Jesus and Mother Mary. One last letter. Dearest Mother, please pray for me. I had colon cancer and now on chemotherapy as there is cancer growth in my liver and two spots on my lungs. My apartment is under government renovation and I need to pay. I also need to find a temporary place to stay. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you, Abba Father. Let's make all these intentions and petitions our prayers and return to Mary with the prayer of confidence. Mother of perpetual help, we come to you and place our trust in you. You are a mother of mercy. You are called by all the refuge and the hope of sinners. Be then our refuge and our hope. Help us for the love of Jesus Christ. Stretch out your hand to us poor sinners. We bless and thank God for giving us this confidence in you. In the past, we have so often sinned, but with your help we can conquer, and you will help us if we pray to you. In all our temptations, may we always turn to you and say, Mary, help me. Let me never lose my God. Amen. Let us share with Mary her prayer of praise and thanksgiving to God. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He looks on his servant in her nothingness. Henceforth all ages will call me blessed. The Almighty works marvels for me. Holy is his name. His mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. He puts forth his arm and strength and scatters the proud hearted. He casts the mighty from their thrones and raises the lowly. He fills the starving with good things, sends the rich away empty. He protects Israel, his servant, remembering his mercy, the mercy promised to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary, you are the mother of Christ. And you are our mother also. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you with all our heart for giving us Mary to be our mother. She is so loving, so thoughtful, so understanding and so kind. We thank you for her. Amen. Another bonus for all of you, a song that you love so much by popular request, The Hail Mary. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed.
is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Dear brothers and sisters in the blessed Lord, greetings of joy and peace to each one of you. Speaking of the season of Advent, most likely all our attention now is placed on the person of Jesus Christ and what not Christmas Day. Very often the role of Mary in this season of Advent is not highlighted or even mentioned at all. So my dear friends, in the blessed Lord, we need to remember one thing, the truth. Devotion to our blessed mother is an assurance to be in communion with her son, Jesus Christ. Till this day, till this hour and minute, Mary is the greatest disciples of Jesus Christ. For Mary is the only one who did God's will perfectly on earth. During this season of Advent, if I may recommend and urge each one of you, why not you include Mary as part of your Advent spirituality. Advent is especially a season of preparing. And speaking of preparation, our Blessed Mother, as a teenager in the temple, as a virgin, she prepared herself physically and spiritually to receive the Blessed Lord. And all this preparation was possible to Mary because right from the beginning, Mary was an obedient person, obedient to the Word of God. My dear friends, obedience is a virtue and obedience is the gateway to any form of spirituality or even devotion in our Catholic Church. Without obedience, our spirituality most likely will be self-centered and not God-centered at all. So in this season of Advent, let us ask our Blessed Mother to intercede for us as we prepare for the coming of Jesus into our hearts. Wish all of you a blessed and fruitful Advent. God bless. Together in faith, we turn to our Blessed Mother and pray the Memorare. Let us include the sick and all those who have asked us 
to pray for them, especially the elderly, as we pray this prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you bore our sufferings and carried our sorrows. Hear our prayers for the sick. Help them to unite themselves with your sufferings. And if it is your will, may they get better. Let them never forget that you care for them. Amen. Mary, from thy sacred image, with those eyes so sadly sweet, Mother of perpetual succor, see us kneeling at thy feet. In thine arms thy child thou bearest, source of all thy joy and woe. What thy bliss, how deep thy sorrow. Mother, thou alone canst from heaven. Let us pray. O oh God, in this wonderful sacrament, you have left us a memorial of your passion. We ask you to enable us so to worship the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may constantly feel in our lives the effects of your redemption. You who live and reign forever and ever. Blessed be God, blessed be His holy name, 
Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit of Paraclete. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Amen. Thank you very much, Raymond Raj, for sharing with us something on Mary for us to ponder and think about that Mary is always part of our Advent preparations. To all our friends and benefactors for your support and your confidence, it was a pleasure bringing you these wonderful creative novenas for the past three years we had been at your service. So we are truly grateful. I can't imagine that we had reached 138 novenas, something so impossible. I don't think anyone online has done anything so creative with regards to a devotion. And we have just a few more to go before we take a break and we will discern whether we should come back. But maybe we can do special novenas in Lent and Easter and maybe Advent, all right? So thank you once again. I end this beautiful devotion. It's sad to say goodbye, but we must. And so this song, you know, join me. What child is this? What child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping, whom angels greet with anthems sweet, while shepherds watch our King.
the virgin sings a lullaby. Joy, joy for Christ is born, the babe, the son of Mary. The babe.